exit poll is predicting a Labour landslide. Blimey. Do you think that you are going to be Deputy Prime Minister? I'm not counting my chickens. Those antics, Ed Davey doing all those things, it worked. It worked. People voted um, for reform uh, because not... they're patriotic. And I'm just going to wash the red across the right-hand side of the screen here. We need the first count. Bridget Mears Philipson. <laughs> Uh, David more than doubling his majority. The result, George Galloway, I'm told, is no longer the MP. Neil Kennock, punching the air. <laughs> Keir Starmer, Labour Party. You have voted. It is now time for us to deliver. Grant Shapps, the sixth minister Turn to lose tonight. Farage Nigel Paul, Reform UK. My plan is to build a mass national movement. Jeremy Corbyn, independent. <laughs> I want to briefly address the result in the rest of the country. Sorry. Annie Morden, Leader of the House, becomes the 16th Minister to lose her seat. I hereby declare that Carla Denyer is duly elected. Yeah. <sighs> it's not looking good for the SNP. We've been swept aside by the, the Starmer tsunami. OK, Jacob Rees-Mogg losing his seat there. Former Prime Minister has lost her seat. The Labour Party has won this general election, and I have called Sir Keir Starmer to congratulate him on his victory. We did it! Yeah! Change begins now. Yeah! The work of change begins immediately. A Labour landslide after 14 years in opposition, a spectacular turnaround in fortunes. I will shortly be seeing His Majesty the King to offer my resignation as Prime Minister. I would like to say first and foremost, I am sorry. He said once formal arrangements are in place, he will step down as the Conservative Party leader. You can see his vehicles coming into the main quadrangle of Buckingham Palace here. He's already changed his Twitter feed. It now says former Prime Minister. That, uh, there's Larry, Larry the Cat, Larry the waiting Cat. to meet his new owner. <laughs> Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party, will meet the King he is Britain's 58th Prime Minister. A cheer going up from his supporters here, waiting for him in Downing Street. The gates are open. My government will fight every day until you believe again. Our work is urgent and we begin it today. Better go and get some fuel. Gosh, what a morning. What a night. I have to say, unexpectedly, my faith has been somewhat restored. I thought Rishi Sunak's speech was very dignified and I thought Starmer's speech was oh I think it gave some cause for optimism let's just have a quick once over of the cars apparently, apparently it was pretty chaotic here yesterday evening Hopefully they've survived. Nobody took out any frustrations on them. I don't have an enormous amount of faith in the Labour Party, if I'm completely honest. But, but, change was needed. When a party is in power for a long period, 14 years for the Tories, there's no question that they can become a little bit complacent and they allow themselves to get bogged down in internal party squabbles and misbehaviours that they would
wouldn't do if they felt they were being more closely held to account or scrutinised. So, interesting times ahead. Interesting times ahead. Some, um, some good people have lost their seats. These things happen. Hopefully some good people have gained new seats. My own constituency, we have changed. It was um, quite a narrow win. But Labour have gained North East Derbyshire from the Conservatives. We'll see what that brings and bloody hell. Nigel Farage is an MP now. Blood and sands. We'll see how his record as an MP compares to his record as an MEP when he scarcely bothered to bloody well turn up. Hey ho. news darlings in terms of illumination now this is the bulb that no longer works and that bulb was in this indeset fridge now you can buy these and they're 16 pounds well i thought bugger that and i bought two cheaper versions for oh i think i think they were five pounds something like that and they kind of do the job. So, as you can see, it's a, a nice white light in there. And I've upgraded the wine fridge. So the wine fridge now has a nice white light. And that ends the fridge illumination update. And I really hope that you enjoyed this section of the video. And if you did, hey, why not tell your friends? Fantastic scenery up here. And I have to say this, going to the Royal 
Back in the car, my lovelies, and it's time to go to work. <coughs> I owe, I owe. So off to work I go. Got it warm. Oh, put those there. I must remember to post that. Oh, and um, I think I'll put this on and we'll have some music, shall we? Well, I will. I'll turn you off. Copyright and all of that. I haven't charged this for a while. Connected. Oh, good. FM transmitter on. 107.8 megahertz. Okay. Right. You've just missed a train. Greetings, Honourable Bridge. Okay, I thought I'd turn you on, if you'll forgive the expression, because I'm somewhere where I'm not often and where I don't think I've been with you guys. And I'm not specifically talking about this new build estate, which I need to turn around in and get out of. Oh God, where, where can I turn around? Oh, I can turn around here, can't I? Not the easiest place to find because it's too new. Not on any maps. Now it's a bit out on a limb this one, but it's a, it's a long-term customer who's just moved. So, you know, if you're a long-term friend of the restaurant, yeah, we'll look after you. So if it's, um, <clears throat> if it's somewhere where we wouldn't normally deliver because it's too far, I'll probably do it. But where we are is Belper, and I'm pretty sure I've not taken you to Belper before, and it's rather nice. 
I've got to try and remember how the hell to get out of here now. Oh God, was it left or right, left or right, left or right? Right, I think. I think, I think, I think. Breathing, darlings. You're welcome. Oh, well done, hopping on the curb there. So you can possibly see at about one o'clock, two o'clock, the old mill building. But it's just rather nice now. <clears throat> when I when I was with Boo and we were living in Pat Matlock Bath, we would come out to Belper on a day off, do a bit of shopping and whatnot, and um, yeah, it's a nice little town. And I just thought I'd show you some of the features of this end of town. Lovely old row of cottages there. So we're going over the river. You can't see, but to your left, there's some very old concrete weir type arrangements. Then look at this. Isn't this interesting? And you've got the massive mill building on your left. I don't think you'd have seen it all that well, will you? And then town is kind of off to the right. Oh, there you go, you can see the mill on the left there. Big old imposing structure in a, in a state of some disrepair. And then we're just going over the railway line. And this is the A6, which we're familiar with the A6, aren't we? But much further on because we jump on and off the A6 around Chapel when we go to the yard. Or we follow the A6 even further if we're going to North Wales. Nice little stretch of road, this.
main road basically. <coughs> Sorry, frogging, frogging throat. Yellow car, no return. But just here, we're going to go under two viaducts. And this is where, just to the left, the main line splits off. So the main line carries on, but then the Derwent Valley line forks off here to the left. And it's the top of the escarpment on the right hand side is where it's running along. <coughs> Oh, I need a drink. I just mean a drink, I don't mean a, an alcoholic drink. Oh, my throat is very dry. And so, yeah, we're going underneath the Derwent Valley line and just on the right there is actually Ambergate Station. And then the Derwent Valley line runs through, oh God, I'll have forgotten all the stations now. Um, it ends up in Matlock. It used to go all the way through to um, to Buxton and then on to Manchester, but now it terminates at Matlock. And then you say so you've got Matlock, Matlock Bath, Cromford, my favourite railway station in the world. Oh, and we're just going underneath the main line now. Uh, Cromford, Watts Well, and then Ambergate. And then that main line goes on um, to Derby. So there you go. I don't often get out there, so I thought I'd share it with you. Well, this is Sod's Law, darlings. There's been nothing it's since... It's um, the oh, there's been nothing since quarter past nine. So... I'm all poised, ready to go, a little bit early, get back for the old live stream. And suddenly at the last minute, an order comes in and where's it to? Bloody Brinsley, which is more than halfway to Nottingham, bloody miles away. So I'm not sure. <clears throat> if I'm going to get back for the live stream now. Obviously the driver went home yonks ago. And I'm not all that well blessed for petrol either. Oh well. Oh well, can't be helped. So, we're having an adventure together today, aren't we? We've been to Belper, now we're going to Brinsley. And then I've got to figure out how the hell I get home from there. I mean, I know I can just program it into my portable electric telephone, but that's cheating. And I try not to cheat, it takes the fun out of it. Nice and slowly as we go past the speed camera just here. Into the 40 zone. I'm trying to 
figure out in my head what's going to be the best way home and I've got a feeling this might sound bizarre but I think the quickest way home from where I've got to deliver to might actually be the motorway. same night 
but one will order like early, the other one will order late. You think, oh bloody hell, get your hand. <laughs> but they're, I mean, they're lovely, so I don't mind. It's just, um, and I wouldn't send the driver out here, it's too far, but I don't mind doing it. It's just, it's only a little bit awkward tonight because, of course, I've got to get back for the. It's really a late one. I've got to get back for the live stream, but uh, I think I think I'm going to do it. I've just got to figure out. I'm sure the motorway is the best option from here. It's not going to be the shortest, not by a long way, but I think it's going to be the quickest. So now I just need to figure out how to get to the motorway. Is the motorway going to be the quickest? Or am I going to be better off going through Selston, dropping into Alfreton? Gosh, um, oh right, decision time now. Do the motorway, darlings. I know I could have put it into my phone and my phone would have told me, but I'm old school. Well, I like to use my brain every now and then, try and keep that slightly active. So basically, if my cacklecations are correct, excuse me, not even a wine burp, I haven't had any wine yet. Uh, if my calculations are correct, we'll be picking up the M1 at junction 27. We'll head north and come off at junction 29. And I've got I've got 46 minutes to do it in and to be back in time for the live stream. That's not allowing any time to go to the loo or put my little bit of shopping away or anything like that. I like a bit of Jeopardy, don't you? time filming there. There's not been any cutting or editing so that will show you how close the uh, the motorway was and I started filming when I was only 500 yards away from the customer's place, maybe a thousand yards. So the motorway really is close but we're kind of going round in a, in a bit of a loop but we're going to be going more quickly than we would have done down the lane. So, here we go. I'm driving home from work and I'm joining the M1. None of us expected that, did we? Oh, 
bugger. I was going to say just sit at 70, but that's now going to be sitting at 50. Oh well. Just going past tip shelf services. And we're still in a 50 restriction, so it's going to be in all the way up to, well, up to wherever. Certainly up to where I'm going to get off. Policeman Badger's in a rush. Bloody hell, it felt like this junction was never going to come. Blood and sands. Shows you how long it's been since I've been on the M1. If I'd have known they were doing this work and it was restricted down, I'd probably have made a different decision. Never mind, here we go. Might need to get my hoof down a bit now though. Brampton 
mile as if no one would have been thriving at this time of night. There's still a few pubs left dotted around here and there, but there used to be a lot of pubs up and down this road. And it was the old challenge, you know, where you have to um, you have to do the whole mile, stopping at each pub, having half a pint in each or whatever. One way to guarantee you'll end up absolutely stocious. from me thank you for watching and i'll see you next time but you and indeed bosh <laughs>